So historically, income tax in my family has always meant family vacation, huge splurges, um, and a lot of really irresponsible spending. Um, up until a few years ago, that's just how it was. And then I decided to get my financial crisis <laughs> fixed, for lack of a better word. And I have been researching and looking into different things that I could do to maximize the impact of my income tax return. So today I have 10 very simple things that you can do with your income tax return to get the most bang for your buck. If that's something that you're looking for and something that interests you, stick around and check it out. here and we are going to jump straight in to 10 things that you can do to make your income tax work for you. The first one is extremely important. Um, it was the very first thing that my husband and I did a few years ago and it has completely changed our life. It has overhauled our financial standing. It, it has really made the biggest difference in the world when it comes to us, especially because we have that variable income, which means our income can change. Um, if my husband takes a day off or anything like that, our income changes. And it is a very real um, problem for families that have to decide whether they can afford to take that day off of work if they're sick or if they have to take their child to the doctor or um, you know, if they can really afford that time off for vacation. So this has definitely made a huge difference in our world and that being is number one, get yourself a month ahead in bills. Now, I know that sounds extremely difficult, but I promise it's not. It may take up a chunk of your income tax depending on how much you get back, but we did this one year and yes, it did take up a pretty large portion of our income tax, but from there on out, we've never had to do it again and it has been life-changing. So I will show you. I have kind of a very lame visual. So, and these are real numbers, okay? So our total monthly bills, and that's not including sinking funds, it's not including our cash envelopes or anything like that, but our total monthly bills, meaning our mortgage, our utilities, our subscriptions that we have every month, like Netflix and things like that, our bills, our debt payments, things like that, cost $2,648 a month. So what I did was I took that money, $2,648, I pulled that out of our income tax and I put it right into a account attached to our checking. And I had the bank, our bank is great and you can name the account whatever you want and it is strictly called Bills Transfer Fund. And I put that money in there and it's in there and we don't touch it except for bills. So. Now, we transfer all of our bill payments from this account into our checking because that's where our bills come out of is in our checking. So I keep very strict track of what goes in and out of that bills transfer fund account. Each paycheck, so when you see me do my cash envelope um, stuffing and things like that, you will see that I say each paycheck, um, our bills column, our, our transfer is exactly half of our monthly total, which is the 1324. So even if that paycheck, our mortgage isn't due, I'm still transferring half of what our mortgage costs is at $500. It's still coming out of each paycheck. So what that means is our first paycheck, when our mortgage would be due, it would come out of our first paycheck. I'm not paying that full thousand dollars out of our paycheck. And then we're robbing Peter to pay Paul because that's a huge chunk of our income. Only 500 is coming out because we've already have half of it sitting and waiting in our bills transfer fund. So there is always, always half of our bills in that bills transfer fund. So that is the very first thing that I would suggest anybody to do because it makes such a huge impact. Number two, 
would be to beef up your emergency fund. Now I know that's what everybody says and I know a lot of people have heard of Dave Ramsey and that's where a lot of the budgeting community um, kind of comes from. And $1,000 for an emergency fund is a great start. It's a great start, it's where we started. Um, but unfortunately today it's not realistic. Um, $1,000 wouldn't even cover you know, if, you're, if your trans goes on your car or if your refrigerator you know, decides to crap out on you. A thousand dollars is great, but unfortunately it just doesn't cut it for a lot of emergencies. So our goal, and that's what we're working toward right now, is to get a six month emergency fund. So that includes the cost of our bills, our cash envelopes, and our seeking funds. So I want six months of all of that. And bonus points, if you can include your insurance out of pocket max, that is the ultimate goal. Because if you think about it, medical bills come up and you're completely unprepared. Right now, I currently have medical debt that we're paying down because we didn't have the out-of-pocket max waiting. So I would absolutely recommend figuring out what your six-month emergency fund would be and start paying into that because that would just set you up for such a long time. And instead of paying... Um, you know, or putting emergencies on a credit card, you can absolutely pull from that emergency fund. Okay, so number three would be to bulk buy any pantry staples. Um, so my husband and I already have that one month of bill, like amount already in our account. So we don't have to work towards that. We are still currently working toward our six month emergency fund, but what we also like to do is take probably about $500 and bulk buy pantry staples from Costco. Um, so some of the things that we like to get is the organic beef and chicken because we are blessed enough to have a deep freezer um, that we got at the beginning of the pandemic. And um, so we bulk buy a lot of chicken and a lot of beef. I have um, protein shakes every day. So um, the protein that I like is from Costco. It's the organ and I buy, um, you know, three or four big tubs of that. We like to get the big boxes of the organic tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, big things of vitamins for ourselves and the kids. Um, and sorry if I keep looking down, I have my notes here, but um, other things would be pastas, baking ingredients, if that's something that you like to do or something that you use often, rice, um, condiments, things like that. I buy big things of peanut butter, a lot of the maple syrups. The Costco has the organic maple syrups in the tub for a really good price. Olive oils, um, even things like trash bags that you use, toilet paper, paper towels, things that you actually use. So not your, your dream self. Right, we all have that, that we, oh God, I would really love to eat this. and Or, you know, quinoa, I really want to be a lover of quinoa. But if you're not going to eat that, it's just going to be a waste. So really be realistic and buy the things that you and your family love to eat and that you eat often. The reason I say to bulk buy and use some of that money is that because it's gonna help you keep your monthly grocery bill down. Um, I can do a whole other video and I do plan on um, doing a video about how I keep my monthly grocery bill for a family of four at 450 or less. And it is in part due to this bulk buy that I do. It helps me to really keep my costs down and um, I'm able to shop my freezer and my pantry um, very often. And so it's a huge help to be able to do that. Number four, pay off as much of your high interest debt as you can. A few years ago, my husband and I had a Best Buy credit card, and if you know anything about Best Buy, they are probably one of the worst stores that you can have um, any debt to because say you buy a refrigerator for them, and they're like, oh, you have you know free interest for 12 months. Well, you don't get the refrigerator paid off in 12 months they will throw the entire 12 months of interest onto the card. And so it was cyclical, it was happening all the time. We were making these payments, but then the next month, the credit card would balance would be more than what it was the month before. So what we did um, was we took a huge chunk of our, our income tax one year and we 
paid a lot of it down on the Best Buy card and we contacted our credit union because we have a credit card through our credit union and it is a very low interest rate. I think it's 6% now. And we asked for a one-time um, payment tr transfer of funds and they increased our credit limit to allow for that transfer of funds, but only a certain amount. So say they approved us for a $4,000 transfer limit. I don't even remember how much it was now, but so just say that they approved us for that and our, our Best Buy credit card was up to 5,500. So we paid 1,500 to get our balance to 4,000, transferred that 4,000 onto our low, um, our low interest credit card and started making payments that way and we paid it off really quickly from then on and that helped a ton so my recommendation absolutely would be to contact your credit union or your bank um, and and inquire about transferring fund like transferring balances over and see how that works for you because that saved us thousands of dollars and it was a, we were able to pay off the credit card very quickly from then on number five would be to buy some things that you need now I stress need, not want. So um, off the top of my head, work clothes. You need new work clothes, buy some work clothes, quality work clothes that you have been wanting and needing. Um, work boots. I know a lot of people need steel toed boots or they need anti-slip shoes or anything like that. So invest in a really good pair that's gonna last you a long time so that you don't have to keep purchasing. Are your towels looking ready? Are your bed sheets having, do they have holes in them? Things like that. Something that you need, absolutely buy that for yourself. Number six would be to start or even fully fund sinking funds or upcoming costs that you may have. So holidays, birthdays, new appliances or furniture, fund those as much as you can. Or even like if your children need braces or if you're saving, um, saving up money for things like that, absolutely put some money in there and get yourself ahead because now if you are able to fully fund those, money that you were putting in there monthly can now be allocated elsewhere like paying down debt or um, into your emergency fund, things like that. Number seven would be to make any home or car repairs that are needed. Now I say repairs, not renovations especially the repairs that if left in disrepair can lead to bigger problems in the long run. For example, learn from our mistake. We had, we bought this house in September. The previous owner had left the dishwasher in a state of disrepair that had actually leaked water behind and underneath all of the cabinets. So not only did we have to come in and replace all of the cabinets, that water damage actually opened up to carpenter ants coming in. Carpenter ants are attracted to wet wood, that's what they eat. Um, so not only did we have to do an entire kitchen renovation, we also had to treat for carpenter ants and um, fix the damage caused. So that's why we have a balance on our credit card. We were in, we were no longer in consumer debt. We are in consumer debt now because we did have to fix a state of disrepair that led to huge, awful damage in the house. So absolutely recommend doing any repairs that can cause bigger issues, such as replacing brake pads on a car that can actually left in disrepair can cause you to have to replace rotors and everything like that so absolutely fix what you can so number eight would be to deposit into an hsa or a health savings account my husband's employer we are very lucky that my husband's employer deposits a certain amount at the beginning of each year onto his hsa card and we can absolutely um, choose to increase the amount that he pays back into it pre-tax we haven't done that yet, but we do um, set aside money every month into a side medical savings, um, which you will see in my cash stuffing envelopes. So I highly, highly recommend, even if you do have a HSA, um, to do a side medical savings account, if you're able to. 
Number nine would be to invest in your health. So this could mean a gym membership. And also see if your employer or your insurance company reimburses you for that or if they pay a partial or even if they reduce your premiums because you are taking, you're an active participant in your health. Um, you can buy some home gym equipment. We're in March now, so a lot of those really well-meaning um, New Year's resolutioners are now selling a lot of their equipment on Facebook Marketplace. So you can reap the benefits and buy really wonderful equipment cheap off of there. Um, buy organic foods. See a nutritionist or a dietitian. Um, you can also invest in a personal trainer. Um, At-home workouts. I know YouTube has lovely free videos that you can invest in um, with your time and your effort. And there are a lot of apps that are really low cost that you can build a whole workout routine on as well. Pay for appointments that you've been needing and you haven't had the money or the time to do. You've really needed this cavity filled. You've really needed this tooth pulled. Um, invest in yourself. And number 10, it is the last on the list because it, when you're looking to fix right now, what can help me financially right now, which is where I'm at in life, I need help today. Um, this is the least of my worries, but I also think it's really important to mention, especially if you're at that position in life, is to invest in an IRA. Find which one is best for you, and you can absolutely do it online through things like Vanguard and SoFi, E-Trade. There are tons of companies out there with zero membership costs, zero maintenance fees, and look into those and research those and see what's best for you. If you have some extra cash, that's absolutely such a wonderful thing to be able to do. Is it necessary to help you right now if you are struggling financially? Absolutely not, and you shouldn't even worry about it because fixing right now is what's most important. What is putting food on your table? What is helping you pay down debt? And unfortunately, investing in an IRA isn't going to help you do that. But if you are in that position, that's absolutely what I would recommend doing. So those are the 10 tips that I have for you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Other than that, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.